Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wampley, here to show you how to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program form powered by Funding Circle to hopefully make things a little bit easier. This particular video is specifically intended for employer businesses working on their first draw PPP application. First, you're going to end up on a page that looks like this, where it says Wampley and Funding Circle partner to help small business to access Paycheck Protection Program loans. What it's going to have you do is click on this bright blue Apply Now button. This will then open up a brand new tab that says, will this be your first Paycheck Protection Program loan? You're going to click yes or no. In our particular case, we're going to go ahead and click yes and then next. After that, it's going to say, we're here to help with your Paycheck Protection Program application. Funding Circle is now approved by the SBA to issue PPP loans. Fill out the information below. Let's do this part together. First, we're going to enter in our first name, last name, email address, business phone number, scroll down a little bit, mobile phone number, business legal name, and then it's going to ask you which industry does your business most closely belong to. Go ahead and click on the drop down and I want you to click the one that's going to be the most applicable to you. In my particular case, I'm going to go down here to where it says professional, scientific, and technical services, and we're going to continue. Next, how is your business structured? Again, there's a lot of options here. Sole proprietorship, partnership, c core S-Core, limited liability company, etc. Pick the one that's most applicable to you. In my case, it's an S-Core. After that, there's a little disclosure that says Funding Circle is an SBA-approved PPP lender. We also work with partners who offer PPP loans to find the right match for your application. Use my information to complete my application with Funding Circle or one of its partners. Go ahead and click that box and click next to business history. After that, it's going to ask you for a couple of questions. First, is the applicant or any owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, voluntarily excluded from participation in this transaction by any federal department or agency, or presently involved in bankruptcy? Click yes or no. Next, has the applicant, any owner of the applicant, or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct or guaranteed loan from the SBA or any other federal agency that is A, currently delinquent, or B, has defaulted in the last seven years causing loss to the government? Again, click yes or no. Next, is the applicant or any owner of the applicant of any other business or have common management with, including a management agreement with any other business? Click yes or no. Did the applicant receive an SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan, IDLE loan, between January 31st, 2020 and April 3rd, 2020? If you did receive that IDLE loan, go ahead and click Yes. It'll ask you for the IDLE loan number. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and click No. Next, is the applicant, if an individual, or any individual owning 20% or more of the equity of the applicant subject to an indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or other means by which formal criminal charges are brought in any jurisdiction or presently incarcerated or on probation or parole. Again, I'm going to go ahead and click no. Next, within the last five years for any felony involving fraud, bribery, embezzlement, or a false statement in a loan application or an application for federal financial assistance, or within the last year for any other felony has the applicant, if an individual, or any owner of the applicant, been convicted, pleaded guilty, pleaded nolo contendere, or been placed in any form of parole? Go ahead and click yes or no. Is the United States the principal place of residence for all employees of the applicant included in the applicant's payroll? What this means is everybody that you included on your payroll calculation, are they located in the United States? If so, go ahead and click yes. Is this applicant a franchise? Yes or no. And is this applicant a franchise that's listed in the SBA's franchise directory? Go ahead and click yes or no. And then we're going to click the bright blue next button at the bottom of the page. Then it's going to ask for your monthly payroll. It'll calculate your maximum eligible loan amount. It's going to ask for your total number of employees. And then it's going to ask you what you intend to use this, uh, uh, this mortgage or loan for. Are you planning on using it for payroll, lease or mortgage, utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damage, covered supplier costs, covered worker protection expenditures, or other. Go ahead and click everything that's applicable to you. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and click payroll and utilities. Next, what is the DBA doing business as or trade name if applicable? Let's go ahead and enter that in. 
What is the business federal tax identification number? As always, in these demonstrations that I show you, any and all of this kind of information is 100% falsified. We're just trying to create as close to an experience that you guys will receive. Next, on what date was the business established? Go ahead and enter that to the best of your ability. Next, where is your business physically located? Go ahead and enter that in. The awesome thing about this one is you can actually select it from the drop down itself and it'll auto populate the rest of the boxes for you, making it fast and easy. Next, it'll ask for the business's legal address, meaning is there a different address on file for this particular business? In my case, I'm going to go ahead and click same business location. However, if it is different, go ahead and make sure you fill that out. And then we'll click ownership information. Next, do you own 20% or more of the business? Yes or no? Next. How many owners of how many owners of 20% or more does the business have? It'll say one, two, three, four, or five. In my case, it's only one of us. And then it'll say next, I agree via electronic signature to the terms of use and privacy policy. If you're curious about those, go ahead and click right here and right here to be able to read them over. Then click the box and click next to business owners. Then it's gonna ask for your basic business owner information. So first name, last name, your title, percentage of ownership in the company, your residential address, your city, your state, we scroll down just a little bit, your state, and then of course your zip code. After that it says email address and then it's going to ask for your, um, your social security number. Again, just like with the last number that I showed you guys, any and all information along these lines is 100% falsified for the sake of this particular demonstration. What we're trying to do is give you guys as close to an experience as possible to make sure it's as close to what you guys will actually see. Next, it'll ask you for your demographic information. So your ethnicity, go ahead and click the one that's going to be the best for you. Your race, your gender, and then of course your veteran status. Once you've filled all of these out to the best of your ability, it'll say next, documents. It's going to have you do three major things. One, you're going to connect with uh, your bank account with Plaid. It does have to be connected via Plaid. And it does have to be the business checking account. All you have to do is click right here on this button and go through the steps to be able to sign into your bank account to connect it here. Once you've gone ahead and you've connected your bank account, it's going to look just like this. After then, it's going to ask you for a copy of official documentation, such as a driver's license. So you're going to go right here to where it says add file. I have it in my documents. I'm going to find my driver's license and go ahead and press open. Takes a couple seconds. Once it's uploaded, you'll actually see it right here in the uploaded documents. If for some reason you do upload the incorrect document, go ahead and click on this little trash can. Then it's going to ask you for a couple more pieces of information. First, additional documents required based on tax filing status. Does the business file a Schedule C? If so, please click Yes. Then it's going to give you some instructions. Without employees, we're going to need your 2019-1040 Schedule C, one 2019 business bank account statement, and a February 2020 bank statement. If you do have employees, then it's going to ask you for your 2019-1040 Schedule C, 2019 Form 941 for all four quarters, and a Q1 Form 941 for February 2020. Once you have all of those, that's what you're going to need if you hit Yes. If you hit No, that you do not file a Schedule C, that's okay. It gives you all your tax information here. What it's going to require is your 2019 business tax return, including K1, to be filed at 1065. Your 2019 Form 941s for all four quarters if you do have employees. Your Q1 2020 Form 941 or February 2020 bank statement. And then, of course, it says if you do have a 2019 full year comprehensive payroll report, you can submit that instead of submitting either one of these two requirements. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and click yes that I do in fact file a Schedule C. And we're going to go through the steps for with employees because this we're functioning as a first draw employer business. So I'm going to click right here where it says Add, Documents, we're going to find my 1040, we're going to press Open. We made sure that's verified, awesome. Next, we're going to go to the 2019 Form 941 for all four quarters. Let's find it. Again, Documents, there's my Q1 for 2019, made sure that it's correct. Click Add File, Q2 for 2019, 941, 
Make sure that's accurate. Add file. Q3 for 2019. Make sure that's accurate. Add file. Q4 for 2019. Press open. Make sure that's accurate. And either we can upload our Q1 2020 form 941 or a February 2020 bank statement. Luckily, I actually have both. I'm going to pick one or the other. So I have my Q1 2020 941 right here. I'm going to press open. And that's available. Once I've gone through and I've made sure that all of my documents meet the requirements as listed up here, we're going to scroll down, double check everything. Again, if you need to delete a document and upload a new one, please Plus, uh, press this tiny garbage can and then press submit. Takes a couple seconds and then it says thank you for applying and it gives you a couple of steps. It says one, hear from us. Your dedicated manager will contact you via email to review your documentation and complete your file and answer any questions. Two, you'll get a decision between one and three business days after you've submitted your application to confirm whether the SBA has approved you. Three, you get funded. Once you've approved and accepted your offer, you'll receive the money in your bank account. Four, loan forgiveness, and then five, payment deferral. If you, after this point in time, after you've taken the time to read these, you are going to receive an email directly from Funding Circle that asks you to set a password for your account. The reason for this is so that you can check the status of your application at any point in time and go back to fill out any documentation as necessary. But as always, if you do run into any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always reach out to us directly. Thank you so much.